Woo! How's it going? Woo! Whoa, 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 welcome. I'm going to change something. Welcome to the Rev Mo Show on TSRnetwork.com, where real people talk about real sex and real kinky people. So tonight I am like drinking. I'm drinking a lot. You see, I'm drinking. I'm going to drink this drink, this Armenian brandy, and I thought it was Arak, but it's it's Arak, 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 Ricky, Rocky, Ricky, Rocky, Ricky. I don't know what it is, but it is good. And I don't drink on my show, and I think I'm going to start to drink on my show. Every single week, Reb Mel's going to get drunk. We're going to see how drunk I can actually get on my show. And Pink uh, Carrie goes, woo, woo, woo. So uh, welcome. If you're, if, you're, you know, if you're watching the show and you're not in the chat room, get your little butt in the chat room. I just want to tell you guys something. I went to Houston, I, mean, I went to Houston, Texas, about 30 miles out of Houston. And I took some awesome pictures. I was there for this. Oh, Big Carrie goes, party time. Yeah, I am hyper. I am off my meds. But I am flying like you would not believe it. I mean, absolutely flying. So I'm having a great time, and so I'm getting drunk. Off my meds, party time. But I went to Texas, and I got to tell you guys something. I'm not going to tell you much about it tonight because I'm going to have the owners of, of the event in the area. I'm going to have them on my show. And we're going to talk about um, myself shooting a gun, shooting three different rifles. I fell in love with rifles. It gave me a climax. It was absolutely amazing. I wanted to shoot the rifle over and over again. I hit the target 16 times straight in a row. Do you believe that? Isn't that amazing? I am really, really happy. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get to my guest because we're not going to talk about Houston and we're not going to talk about um, Liberty Manor at the moment because they're going to be on my show. So I want to bring my guest. He is an amazing, an amazing friend of mine. He's been there for me through thick and thin, him and his submissive, uh, his charm. Slave. No, it's slave. Submissive. I don't know. I get it so mixed up because I don't do it right. I never can own a slave. I never can have one long enough to know me. So, I'm going to introduce my guest. It's Sir. What's your name? No, Gio. Woo! <laughs> hey! Yeah, we know, ah! so, we know each other so well, you can't remember my name. I like that. <laughs> Must be the alcohol talking. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to take another puff. I mean, another drink. Oh, that's right. I'm not smoking weed. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, we can smoke meat, weed and marijuana, so I could do a show. They go, wow, great shooting. Thank you, Pig Perry. It was <laughs> fucking. Awesome. I mean, awesome to have that powerful machine, that rifle, that one, and hit it. That Mel's a little power crazy right now. <laughs> Someone's got to be. <laughs> dude, oh. dude, it's been a while since I've seen you. Um, yeah, it's actually, it has been, hasn't it? The last time I think we did a little uh, impromptu uh, guitar uh, sing along out there right by your place. Oh, you know, people are still asking. They're asking me when you're coming back. They go, God, can he come back and he, can he please, you know, um, play some more music? Um, um, Carrie, Pig Carrie says, Sir Geo in the house. Yeah, Pig Power in the house. <laughs> he, yeah. She's up in Pacoma, Washington right now. Yeah. yeah. And From what I can tell, she's doing pretty good, so I'm really happy to hear that. And she says um, that marijuana is legal in Washington also. Do you have to have a, a card? I wonder. We have to have a card. You know, it's legal. I mean. It's legal here. You just have to ask, have a scratch on your hand and go and go, I, I hurt. I need help. <laughs> They'll give it to you. <laughs> I can't smoke weed because this is what happens. Ready? <coughs> I go straight to sleep. Absolutely. Oh. I go straight to sleep. Yeah, you know, it doesn't work with me either because normally what I do is I'm so ADD already. I forget what I'm doing because I forgot what I was doing earlier because I'm doing something different now. And if I smoke pot, one day it took me like 15 minutes. I think I was like 19 years old. I walked in a circle for 15 minutes forgetting what I remembered that I forgot that I needed to get. 
something before I went outside the door, and I said, the hell with this, that's it. So, <laughs> <laughs> at that point, I kind of kicked it. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't smoke weed. And, you know, when I went to Texas, um, I was so scared of snakes and scorpions, and even though they... I know they have them, but I mean, I only got to see a wood snake, and it was a huge wood snake. It was beautiful, though. But I was like, "Oh my god!" So, what kind of snake? <laughs> okay. No, it wasn't connected to a man. In a <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a woody. <laughs> Just checking. So I, I, I was so scared the first night because I got off of all of my sleeping pills. You know, I got off of everything, anything that the doctor said I was supposed to be on. Yeah, I, and I told them today, Gio, Sir Gio, you should have seen the looks on my psychi I mean, my therapist and my regular doctor. This is what I did just before I was ready to leave my therapist. I looked at her and I says, "Oh, one more thing. I'm off all my meds." She went. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a little concerned myself. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're concerned about me. They said it's not going to hit me for about another month. And by then, they said I'll probably be climbing up the walls, you know. Well, we'll find out. If if you do, you know, we'll come down and, you know, take pictures. Oh, I know. Well, <laughs> it'll be interesting. Because we love you that much. <laughs> well, I took three sleeping pills the first night in Texas because I was scared. I was, I was living, I was, I was in this beautiful glam tent. It was gorgeous. And I'm I'm in this tent, and there are mosquitoes, there are there are horse flies that are as big as a mouse. I mean, everything is big in Texas. Everything is big in Texas. And cockroaches are huge. I didn't see cockroaches, but I saw I saw caterpillars that would come down on the bed. I found one in my bed. I go what? The? And then they told me the next day that they they bite. And I was like, you got fucking be kidding me. Maybe well, that's maybe well, that's why. in Texas. <laughs> I have calamine lotion all over me. Yeah, that's why I'm almost in the nude because I have to have it. Um, so it was great in Texas, but I want to get off of Texas because we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna get on Texas in two weeks, hopefully. Um, so what you have become a DJ legend. In oh. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know if legend is uh, if I'm worthy of that, but. Um yeah, I appreciate it. You know, um, I've had uh, the pleasure of playing some really nice gigs uh, with some really great people. Um, so, you know, it's it's been a great ride. And the funny thing is, the reason why I got back into DJing, I kind of always liked doing it, but um, I'm getting old. <laughs> No, I you know I, um I've been in punk rock bands and speed metal bands and stuff like that, and I just can't play like I used to. Um, but I still wanted to put the music out, and uh, so this has kind of been a real fun gig for me. I can still manipulate the music, um, play the stuff that I like, um, and I've always you know as you know I I've, I've always been a dancer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's talk about that for one second. Do we have to? I don't think people are really aware of this. And you know, um, if you ever, any ladies that are out there, if you ever get a pleasure of getting a lap dance from Geo, it will be absolutely tremendous. <laughs> so let's talk about that. You used to do what? Um, I used to dance um, for pleasure and uh, and uh, pay. <laughs> Yes, for pleasure and pay. Explain. Um, I'm drinking. Well, uh, yeah, I used to do private dance dances. Um, not really escort, but uh, just uh, you know, stripper. Um, oh God. Um, bridal showers and you know, fun stuff like that. You know, birthday parties. So can I ask you the question? Did you ever get laid at them? I cannot talk about that. <laughs> Maybe once. Oh. How's that? <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It was worth it. <laughs> How old were you when you lost your virginity? Oh wow. Um. Well, that's that's a good question. Actually, I was. I think. Um, 
I kind of played around, you know, but I don't think anything actually went in. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I guess that doesn't count. Um, but yeah, I was a I was a freshman in high school, so that wow. was my my first uh, my first encounter um, with uh, there was two couples. So wait, it was two couples, so you guys had a five sum? Well, no, it was just uh, four of us. All oh, four of you. <laughs> so okay, you know you know what, Gio, this is the first time since we've relaunched that I'm going to ask this question. I have not asked this question to anybody, right, Pig Carrie? You have not heard me ask this question since we relaunched. And I already know the answer. <laughs> I've already asked this before. I'm almost afraid. <laughs> <laughs> How big is your cack? <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. Well, I don't have the exact specifications, but it's a... Uh... Men don't measure it. I would if I if if I was a man, I would make it really really firm, and I would measure the, the girth and and the length and I would want to know about exactly what size I am. Well, you know, I'm a variable. You're I'm a variable. Grower. You're, yeah. Okay. Are you a grower or a shower? I'm a grower. A grower. Uh, so it depends on how excited I am and how big it gets. Uh huh. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, um, I think women are, are are growers or showers too. I think they're they get big and you know, they're, 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 yes. Let's do the the correct name. The Yes, <laughs> the little man in the boat. <laughs> oh, I love that little man. In the boat. You know, I did. You know, I learned that little man from in the boat from you. I did not even know what that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, with Gary. all your experience. <laughs> Gary in the chat room says, uh, "No, you haven't said that. No, I I tried to keep it clean because we're on um, we're on YouTube. But you watch some of the things that are on YouTube. I mean, some people get pretty gross. You know, yeah. they say really crazy things. As long as we don't show boobies, and I'm gonna have another drink, maybe I will. <laughs> well, you're already showing shoulder. That's a first. Hey, I know. Go. <laughs> I look like I'm in the nude, don't I? Ah, uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should, maybe we should, we should type out Rev Mel's in the nude. I'm gonna yeah. do that right now. You guys are gonna hear me typing. <laughs> well, I'm nude from the waist down, so. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Rev Mel's. Rev Mel is in the nude on her shelf. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> now, on TSR Network. Come and get a glance yeah. of her white, white, white <laughs> flesh. You can't okay. say pure, <laughs> even though it's white. No, I have no. You're not pure. <laughs> I may look like I. I may look like I bake fucking cookies, but I sure ain't that type of chick. <laughs> so, so, so you have good girth. Let's let's really take this to another serious level, and then we're gonna find out some of the things <laughs> that we're doing. real serious. Let's get all of this stuff out of the way. Okay. Just We got to get the cock talk over with, right? Yeah, because I haven't done it. I think that's the reason why the ratings have been going down. No, the ratings have been absolutely. We have had something like seventy-five thousand people watch the show since we relaunched. Wow, yeah, that's we, great. Yeah, we, I mean it's been pretty phenomenal. I mean I can't. I go and look at look at the stats on YouTube and how many people watch the shows, and yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. So, um, how big are your balls? Oh, I have giant balls. Giant balls. <laughs> so you could do um, those those key things. Oh yeah. Balls? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're they're very productive. Haha, <laughs> entropy <laughs> in the chat room. He's like, I want to see Rev Mel in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, entropy. <laughs> Welcome, entropy. Woo 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 woo. I'm back to my old. You know what? I'm back to my old my old way of doing the show. No more being conservative. No more being. Mm -hmm. You know, fuck it. I think it's because you're off your meds. There you go. I'm saying it right now. I think that it's because I'm off my meds and I'm drinking. Yeah. Oh! 
<laughs> and I've had ice cream just before the show. <laughs> the and the alcohol and having you on my show, which is, you know, absolutely wonderful. Um, it's making me excited. It's making wow. it's like <laughs> it's like when I shot that rifle and I got horny. Oh yeah. I, I was fucking horny. I was shooting that rifle sixteen times straight hitting this thing that goes ding ding and I got horny. Yeah, that's how I feel. When, when you're I'm having sex. Oh, when you're having sex? <laughs> <laughs> After the sixteenth time, yeah. <laughs> You're the little ding, 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 and you know you're doing all right. Entropy says, yes, just in time. It seems, what the hell have I walked into here? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I'm back. I'm off the meds. I'm back. I'm drinking. I'm having a great old time, and I'm showing flesh. Yes. That is, you know, this is really fantastic. I've known you for a while. Yeah. We've um, actually... Um, I've slept at your house. Yes, you have. Yeah. Yes. Holy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've slept at yours. Um, I've seen you. I've seen you in your, in your briefs. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, seen, boxer briefs. Yeah. Yeah. Boxer briefs. Another couple of drinks. You don't have to worry about. That. <laughs> <laughs> so this is yeah. This is you know Armenian brandy. Yeah. So I remember. Um, the first time we met you was at the lair. Mm -hmm. um, we sat in on one of your classes, and you were so just magnificent. You kind of the way you walked. With you had this long flowing dress, and you know you're all in black, so you couldn't see your feet, and you just kind of floated. Well, and I was like thirty pounds at the time. <laughs> No, <laughs> I had to float. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you had legs or not. I was like, <laughs> oh, but you know. And then um, my slave and I uh, came out, and we helped you build the loft, mm -hmm. um, painted it, and all that good stuff. Got you moved in. Um, we were there at the first BDSM Pride Day. You were the the disc jockey. You did yes. all the music. That's when I first realized that you were a disc jockey. You yeah. Know, you put up with... Okay, explain <laughs> to the people what you put up with. Where were you oh. at the loft? Uh, I was upstairs in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hot up there on the very top. Um, I could feel... it was. It, I almost felt like God because I could see everybody but you know they didn't know I was there you know but I had a good um, I actually have some really good pictures of the stage and the view and some of your guests um, and it, it was just it was fantastic being up there and then every once in a while somebody you know I'd talk to or do something and everybody kind of like look around for me where you know they couldn't see where I was at and um, after everybody got up there, that place was so packed. I swear we were all going to go <laughs> well, you break know, the floor out. My, yeah, that was my major concern. My major concern, I mean, that show went on for seven fucking hours, BDSM Pride Day. Mm -hmm. And I was so worried that the floor was going to cave in. There was, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, you're sweet, 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 you know, her charm, your, your slave. Yeah. She got people water to places where you could not get to anybody. I was cracking up because I was watching her chase you trying to get you to eat something or drink something so that you could have the energy to keep going. And it was hilarious. It was like a little puppy chasing so she, a cat. She, she, <laughs> I was able to do that seven hour marathon both both times. The first time at, at right. the off and the second time at um, Sanctuary. If it wasn't for, you know, for her, you know, always trying to make me eat and drink and putting my feet up and I never could put my feet up. She was amazing. I mean it was we had what about it was about two hundred and fifty people in the audience. I mean it went on yeah. for I learned a lot of very valuable lessons from that show. Please do not do a long memorial. It's like pulling teeth. Oh, yeah. But we yeah. had some great speeches. Um, you know and anybody that is watching the show, please at one of your local dungeons please celebrate um, BDSM Pride Day. Do it your way. This is yeah. not 
not anything that I just own or that I've just made up. BDSM Pride Day is all of yours. We are one. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. Indeed. Get the clubs in the area to, to have parties. And, to, uh, and if, you can, if you can do a donation, don't, um, donate it in the name of BDSM Pride Day and your club and send it to the National Correlation of Sexual Freedom. You know, they could use the money. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, anyone Perfect. wants to do a fundraiser for that, I mean, do it on BDSM Pride Day. Right. It's helped a lot of people. Yeah, so you're up at you're up in, in the in the third floor of the loft. You were sweating to death. You were, yeah. There was one unique thing about that upstairs was that only people that were the size of a hobbit could actually stand in that place. And you had to sit down the whole time. And in order to get up there, you had to bend over, almost walk like a primal um, ape to get in there. You know, mm. like, and it was amazing that you were able to do that for seven hours, and it was bloody hot. Yeah, it was it was definitely um, hell. <laughs> well, we couldn't turn on the air conditioning because it would have interrupted the sound. We didn't have right. the sound system that we had afterwards. And the reason why we had such incredible sound and we always have really good sound is because of one person. And that one person is Sergio. <laughs> he went out and he searched and searched and got me some absolutely... F well, you tell them the story. Oh, yeah. Um, well... <laughs> The handheld mics didn't work very well, and most people, unless you're an entertainer and you're doing it all the time, you have to put the microphone right up to your mouth, and nobody does that. They hold it in front of themselves or off to the side, you know, and it looks cool and all that, but you can't hear anything. Well, so, this, I'm, I'm going to give a couple of imitations of it, right? Hi. Hi. Or. Hi. Or. Yeah. Or my my favorite is this one. Yeah, I remember that. Did a bit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we went out and uh, we found some shotgun mics yep. um, that were so dynamic you could hear the airplanes going overhead. Uh, a couple of shows that I was watching before. <laughs> you can you can hear the airplanes. And remember, I don't know if you remember at the at the, stu at the old loft the studio. That at ten o'clock at night the uh, Mexican bar opened up oh, next God. to us, and you'd hear this. Oh yeah, just the bass thumping through. Yeah, I remember sleeping over the night before the Pride Day show, and my God, you know, until it was it went until like three in the morning. I think they started closing down about three thirty. It was um, it was definitely interesting, kind of like dance in your sleep. Well, he came, he came and he redid all of the wires for me. He took all of my, my, my wires home, my, my, my mic wires, and uh, he may have to do that again with all the yeah. moves and taking them down. And he took them all home and he fixed them. I mean, he absolutely fixed them for me. And it was pretty amazing. And he was, you know, this man, when he met me, I was with Phil, remember? Yeah. And uh, Phil and I split up and he helped me, he helped me move everything downstairs into this little storage area of this building that I used to manage and he, he was there for me and then when I moved from the apartment to the studio he was there for me and he helped me move and then when I moved from the studio into storage where everything stayed in for two and a half years he was there for me and then we moved it all the way to then he came back to the storage filled up the truck and then we went to my ex-husband's house and put it in his garage and we said go home you don't have to come all the way to Downey bumfuck Downey I think the, the best one though out of all of that was the second BDSM Pride Day yes that was okay we basically there was four of us that got all the furniture over to the same sanctuary from the lair, borrowed stuff from the lair, borrowed stuff from everybody, got it over there, set it up, got your whole, all the audio, audio um, all the equipment, got the it all set it up. Did Threshold also loan us chairs? I think Threshold did too. Yeah. yeah. We had and then, Threshold, yeah. And then at 11 o'clock, you were one of the judges for the schoolgirl party um, at Master D's. <laughs> so we went up there <laughs> and oh my god, you know, Ken Marks was there, I mean, everybody was there, I mean, 
And we're up there, and I'm just like, Mel, we've got to go. It's 12, you know, it's 12 o'clock. We think we got out of there like at 1 o'clock the night before we had to go set up Sanctuary. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. But, I mean, it was fun. It, it was crazy. We'll do it again, but, you know, we need to have more support. We need to have more people working on the project. It can't. I can't do it alone. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't do it alone. I had, I had you. I had um, her. You know, um, her charm, which was your sweetheart. And I had a few yeah. other people, and and Deb, and, and some other people that helped. But you know, we really need to make this a community thing. Because you know, yes. honest truth of all of this, Gio, is I'm getting old. I'm not going to be here forever. And you know, my daughter wants none of this stuff. None of it. Yeah. We have thousands of hours of interviews of some yeah. major players in the BDSM lifestyle. And I've got to find a place for it. And Pig Carey said I was there. Yeah, you were at BDSM. Yeah, that's right. Pig Carey helped too. Yep. Yep. Oink, oink, and oink. <laughs> and guess who's coming back to California? Guess Is who? He? I'm going to have another dream. <laughs> Pig Carey, are you coming back? No. No? I wish Pig Carey would come back, but I think Pig Carey yeah. is doing really well. Yeah. Venus is coming back, and she's she? in San Francisco, and she'll be coming down, and she'll be spending a lot of time with me. Oh my God, Lila. that'll be fantastic! In the house, yeah. that'll be fantastic. I haven't seen her for a long time. Well, her and I both—I lost the studio. She had the car accident. We yeah. both collapsed, and uh, we're back. We're back, nice and strong, and um, you know, we're pretty yeah. excited about it. Yeah, she bit. looks like she's she's been doing good. I kind of been keeping tabs on her, and you know, saying hi here and there, and and, and she's doing a lot better. So um, that's good to hear. Yep. I'm glad she's being, you know, she's going to be able to come down and make the trek down here and say hello. <laughs> I, look, look, she'll be down. Um, on yeah. my life, um, Shiloh um, made a statement when I said that I was getting nude on the show. So you guys don't know if I'm really nude, do you? <laughs> So, uh, and I says I was getting drunk, and they asked me if I was getting drunk with tequila. No, I'm getting drunk with this Armenian brandy, and it's seven years old. It's pretty good. I mean, I it was all the other stuff, but it's not. It's a rock, rock, a rock, a rock, a rock. So I thought it was different. So you, yeah. what? You, you, you're involved in some things. What's going on? What, what, what do you, what do you got out there? Um, well, let's see. Uh, the next, uh, what am I doing? I have, I'm doing um, some fun stuff. This is actually a yearly uh, event that uh, it's a Southern California leather gathering um, with slave uh, pug. So that is something. It's at the Winter Narrows in El Monte. It's in a big park. It's on, um, let's see, my notes are right here. June 21st. Um, it's open to everybody. It's about all the leather communities coming together um, in a really open atmosphere. Uh, there's, it's basically a picnic. They will have a fire, bring your own food, come down, um, hang out. I'll be playing some music, uh, just kind of enjoying the day. So you so, pick me up? Well, of course, don't we always? But you know what? I have to be there at 7 in the morning. Are you going to be up at 7? Actually, you'd be 6. That's okay. I could sleep in <laughs> another day. <laughs> I can, I, can, I, can, I can sleep in another day. No, I've been getting up at like 7.30 in the morning now. I'm off my meds. I'm doing really oh, There you go. Really, well, really we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll drag you along like we always do. <laughs> um, um, Pig Carey says, um, SCLG is the awesome, okay? And, um, and Pig Carey says, well, I'm w wonderful that Venus is coming back. Yep. And then Entropy said, Oh, good Christ. I used to know an Iranian dry cleaner who drank stuff like that, <laughs> like water. You could fuel a dragster on that shit. <laughs> you know, you can also clean clothes with it. <laughs> that stuff's good. 
Oh, uh, so so you're so you're going to be disc jockeying like you did last year, correct? That was awesome. Right. right. You know, you know what happened last year. You know, you know it was the fight between me and the monarchs with water. Oh my God, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I I'm like protect the music equipment. <laughs> Everybody yeah. stay away from the music equipment. Well, who started that was Deb. She threw water at me, that's and I started. Right. Everybody else, and then. In fact, it was really funny. I ran into one of their tents, and Colin goes, "Get out of our tent!" I go, "No." <laughs> <laughs> that was that was you know that's that was a definite highlight of the day. I mean, it's so hot; it's great being wet, anyways, right? <laughs> well, I'd like to be wet a different type of wet, but that's been three and a half years. We're not even going to go into that. So, if anybody <laughs> wants need, to the raffle, <laughs> of, of, of get the flower. We need to get Rob Nelson cock. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get her some cock. <laughs> Rev Mel needs the cock. I need the cock. <laughs> the vibrator on the clitty is just not doing it anymore. I just got to get rammed. You know, you know, this body needs some cock. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, I can't. I'm like, <laughs> my day hurts. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's really good to see you smile. <laughs> Seems like you smile even more when you're talking about cock. So I mean, I really have to get laid. Yeah. Well, you got to stretch your, you know, your, the, the face muscles too. You, you got to get into the cock. I just, I, I have to do intercourse. I have to get on my knees, lean over. I have to do intercourse. <laughs> yeah, I can come by and play the music for you if you like. <laughs> I don't know. All my neighbors want you back so bad. I mean, they're asking me all the time, they, especially the guy from 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 um from I don't know from. He's right upstairs, wasn't he? Where? The gentleman, the right up. Right they had the accent right from. Upstairs? Uh, from uh, yes. what, what country was he from? He goes. So when did your friend going to come back? <laughs> yeah, he was a really nice guy. I really liked him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he goes, I like him. When is he going to come back? Are you not doing the music no more? <laughs> <laughs> Drinking. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, you know, we'll we'll have to do that again. You know, I've got to tell you, you know, um, like I said before, you know, I used to be into like punk bands and speed metal and stuff like that. And you know, I, I'm kind of sl I'm slowing down a lot. <laughs> and uh, in fact, um, I only have one. Well, I have one electric and one acoustic electric guitar. But I'll have to say, one of the hardest songs I've ever had to play was that BDSM Pride Day. That oh. went on forever. <laughs> I made a five-minute song last like an hour. <laughs> Oops. One and after another, and I'm like, okay, I can't, you know, and I'm like, I didn't really rehearse anything else, so I'm just like, okay, I'll just keep playing this thing over and over. But that was bad planning on my part. You know, I've never been an organizer. <laughs> but I, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, you know, I had a really good time doing that, you know, even though, you know, this is, this is the funny thing. Um, this is how we were all running around. Uh, I was doing the sound. I was doing the background music. I came up, played the guitar, ran back up, played the music for the thing, all of the different you know awards and stuff like that. Then we came down and presented an award. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charm was in the kitchen trying to get all the the food ready, and you know chasing you know, like I said chasing you around, getting you you know drinks and stuff like that. So it was um it was. Crazy. And what, what happened? And what happened with the food is that we had VIP tickets, and the food was the food oh. was really only for the VIP. And we didn't and have enough everybody. people to police it. Yeah. So everybody <laughs> so, rushed in there. All the food was gone in like 15 minutes, I think. Well, Oof. we we made a lot of mistakes, but you know what? It was an awesome. You know, it was for a good cause. It was for to to be yes. proud of, of BDSM and to be proud of who we are. You know, we don't have to be hidden in the closet. You know, I, I like my new little um, my we are one. Right. Let me see if I can. I'm not going to bring it up, uh, but I am going to read it if I can. 
It says, um, oh, hold on. Open up. No. It says, TSR salutes, TSR network salutes all the members of our communities. BDSM, we are one. Leathermen, clubs, leather women, dungeon owners, dominants, munches, bottoms, tops, slaves, heterosexual, lesbians, fet life, educators, gay, pony, submissive, poly, toy makers, transgender, littles, collar me. We are all changing the world one vanilla at a time. I firmly believe that. You know, and it's a it's a great community. I mean, you know, w when we pull together, it's it's amazing what we can do. Yes. You know, um, I've seen some really amazing things happen. Um, you know, we've lost some people in in the community lately. Uh, you know, we did. Yes, with Skip Dog, um, his memorial was just. I mean. Breathtaking. I, um, I know um, BOD did a little something for him. Um, I was there for that. And then again, we did it with uh, Mistress Melissa. You know, she came out and we went to the sanctuary and had a lot of people come together. And, you know, you could just feel the love, I mean, of all these people that came out. And it was just, it was an awesome feeling, you know, to have that kind of community. And um, I really think we need to, you know, keep that going, you know, with everybody. And that's the one thing about the, um, you know, the, the picnic. You know, it's a chance to get all the leather groups together. Um, doesn't matter gender, um, you know, what you identify as, with. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, bottom line, we're one group. Yep. So... We all have something in common, and we have to be supportive of each other. It doesn't matter what group it is, what club it is, you know, what exactly. we are. You know, it's really important that we, we, we come together, all of us. Yeah. We're one big family. We are. Yeah. We have this, this love of BDSM. And yeah. That's why you do what you do. I mean, let's let's face a fact. Do you oh, know, yeah. a million dollars, aren't you, being a disc jockey? <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I'm not going to get rich off it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know. And I, I make, you know, people have claimed that, you know, Rev Mel is a bad businesswoman because she doesn't make any money with TSR, but that was never the reason I did TSR Network. Yeah, that's exactly it. I know that, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we've been around to help you because we see that. You know, we know that you're there because of the love of what you're doing and the alcohol. No. <laughs> Well, yeah. the reason I picked it up was because guest um, 180 said, Cheers, Reb Mel, your glass is looking empty. Are you, yeah. If I would put more in this, I would be flat. <laughs> We'd have to go over there and pick you up. <laughs> How much work I have to do tonight after the show? So in the chat room, let's get some questions. Come on. Let's get some questions or some statements. Um, Pig Carey says, the community is the best. I love you all. You all have been wonderful to me. Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> and you've yeah. been wonderful to us, too. Yeah. And that, that's the whole purpose of why we do what we do. I mean, you know, you're an amazing, kind person. You're a very strong and very wise dominant. I mean, you are, you, know, you have been my friend through thick and thin. Well, and thank you. Uh, you have been there when you know when I've collapsed and you know I couldn't cope and go on anymore, which we don't really talk a lot about that because I've been really getting bitched at by a lot of people um, when they find out what I went through the last two and a half three years. Yeah. So many people have come to me and they have said we just found out what what was going on with you and why didn't you come to us? Because <laughs> you know I've I've gone through that. Um, it was a while ago, and there was a point in my time, you know, in, in my life where um, I, I mean, I had to struggle just to get out of bed, mm -hmm. just to go to work, and and I lost a lot of friends for a little while because they're like, well, hey, you don't even call us, you know, I'm like, you know, I only talked to, I think there was one person that I talked to at that time, and um, you know, I just, I just kind of like put my head down and just kept going, you know, and, and I really didn't want to, and uh, eventually I came out of it, but um, it's, it's, you know, I know it takes a lot, it takes a lot out of you. If you go through that, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know. Well, I think what happens to us in this community is that we get so private in our personal lives because we have our public lives and our personal lives. 
And a lot yeah. of times, a lot of us, including myself, we don't let the two mix. <laughs> yes. Know what's going on? And we lost a really good friend um, who was very depressed, and she killed herself. Yeah. It was. It was. Um, it was you know, KP. And yeah. it was. It was really heartbreaking. Yeah, I remember that. Hurt herself. And none of us knew. None of us. None of us even you know, people that were really close to her knew, because we're we when we go to a play party, and this is one of my pet peeves. When we go to a play party, everybody we go there to play, we go there to have fun. And the minute someone says that they're having a really rough time, people go, "Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Oh, I gotta go. I'm gonna go play." You know, they don't yeah. want to hear it at a play party. Yeah. You know, there should be a support group for people that are going through a really hard time. You know, like like a you know a support munch of some sort that people yeah. And if they're troubled, I mean, you know, we... That's true. Well, you know, because, I mean, I think it has a lot to do with what we do. I mean, you know, we're into punishment. We're doing, you know, we're doing scening um, where you're beating somebody, you know. So uh, as a whole, we try and keep everything positive mm -hmm. because that's where you really need to do, especially when you're going to go beat the hell out of somebody. You have to make it a positive experience. Otherwise, it becomes abuse. So yeah. um, it's hard to deal. You know, people don't always want to deal with the the bad part. Everybody wants to be bubbly and happy. You know, so it, it takes a lot to sit down with somebody and listen to them. You know, and uh, I think that would be a, a real good thing to have some kind of support group. I think we need one. Evan Stone, I mean, Ev, Ev Stone just has come into the chat room. She, um, she's, uh, she makes the most amazing corsets and, and you know, things for BDS. I mean, she's just amazing. She was on, um, on one of the shows here on TSR Network just a few weeks ago. But welcome to the chat room. You know, we, we don't talk about our personal lives, you know, in mm -hmm. BDSM. I mean, every, you know, I mean, some people that we know for a long time, we don't really know what they're going through. We don't really know what their home life is like. We don't know if they're happy or sad because we put on this. I have to say, I'm really good at doing that, putting on this facade that everything is okay. Right. But yeah, the, I think we are. Yeah. Because that's what people want to see. I mean, if you go out and you're depressed and you, you know you know you you know you're having a pity party, nobody wants to go. <laughs> you know. And, you know, so and for me, I mean, one of my releases is music. Mm -hmm. You know, um, another reason why I started DJing in the BDSM clubs and um, dungeons is because you know I went in and I was not really inspired by what was playing. I'm I'm kind of fickle in what I like. Um, I'm eclectic. I you're a fickle dom. Yeah, the figure <laughs> controlling too. <laughs> so that's one of you know that's one of the things you know. Actually, I started at the lair. You know, uh, we we did the um, New Year's Eve party and Kane's birthday party, um, and that's become a tradition. This will be the third year coming up that we're going to do that, um, and you know. Like I said, you know, I got I got the um, wonderful chance to be the DJ at Ken Marcus's birthday party at his 65th birthday party. That was just amazing, you know. Um, but it was even more amazing because I was able to get out and play too. So mm -hmm. I had another DJ help me out, and while he was DJing, I got to go out and play with my girl. And that's always fun. That you know, was an awesome birthday party. It was, yeah. There was a lot of really great people there. So. Yeah, awesome. Um, Pig Carrie in the chat room says, "If I may, you can't help if you don't ask." Yes, I. Yeah, those are very That's valuable true. lessons to learn. They are real. I mean, I don't ask. You know, I have no excuse. And maybe That's, that's may. probably one of the hardest things, especially I think for a dom, to ask for help. Because you're in a position that you know. Okay. Most of us are control freaks, so giving it's kind of almost like giving up control because you're you don't know what to do, mm -hmm. and to admit that is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
I think that's part of the problem. Steve Stone in the chat room said, I guess it all depends on your personal level of transparency and intimacy with another person or your own self. I think that you have the transparency on a one-to-one -one relationship and that intimacy, but out in the public you kind of, you know, I have to say also as being a female dominant and um, in doing what I do, you know, running the shows. I mean, if I was every single show complaining about my life and talking about, you know, yeah. well, well, I mean, I would have nobody watching the shows. And also, you have to be really careful what you put out there on FetLife because it can be twisted and turned around. And, mm. um, you know, it can, it can be very dangerous for one person to handle. So um, I think that's why we keep it a little close. And maybe we need a support group, especially for the dominance, because we don't let our guards down. We mm. have these walls up. I mean, when you've gone into problems, I mean, who do you go to? Who do you who do you go talk to? Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I like to do a self cleansing, but I talk a lot with my my uh, my slave. You know, um, Charm is you know she is mother half. You know, and I bounce a lot of my ideas off of her. Um, you know, I, I we're you know we're pretty much inseparable. You know, we're like, we go to everything. I have so much fun with her. Um, even when I'm mad at her, I'd rather be with her and talking to her um, than being away from her. Um, I want that. That's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, yeah, she, she is my slave and she is my best friend. You know, so um, it really, it really helps, you know. You have to have some kind of um, outlet. You have to be able to talk, you know. And, and I talked with you too, you know. Um, I, and you know, it, it's kind of funny because we all separate, like you were talking earlier. We separate our lives, our BSM life from our vanilla life. You know, like I have to get up and go to work tomorrow morning, um, and although I'm out pretty much to everybody, you know, some of the local, the people that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, no, um, but I'm not out there raising my hands up going, hey, look at me, I'm, you know, doing this and having fun and, you know, and, you know, so I have different lives, you know, I have the DJ life, um, I also do weddings and stuff like that, so, you know, vanilla weddings, I also do BDSM weddings, um, I do local, um, last weekend I did a nerd night, um, which was vanilla, but at the same time it's fetish because it was cosplay. Um, we, you know, we had a blast. Um, uh, personally, you know, I don't drink anymore. Um, I've been sober for a little while now. Um, and uh, that has been a big change for me too. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> you make up for me, right? <laughs> no, I have, you know you know I never drink. Oh, I know. I know. It's very rare that I I think I've seen you drunk maybe twice or three times. Has it been that many? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not much much of a drinker, but uh, I felt well, that Well, I'm counting this time, so <laughs> But you're not really drunk drunk yet. Not yet, wait till I take off all my clothes and masturbate mm -hmm. everybody. Then you two. That would be interesting. No, that won't be. No. no. I had yeah. to show my doctor my cooch today. <laughs> because you know, I went, I went, I didn't know if I got, if I got a tick in Texas because I'm, I'm I have bites. Right. I don't know You're if covered got, in calamine lotion. Yeah, I'm all covered with calamine lotion and this really strong antibiotic stuff and stuff. Because I get, I'm allergic. I get allergic to things really easily. So, and she says, well, did you get bit by a tick? I says, no, but you know what? There was this thing that was really on, on my, you know, I it was down there in that area. And it's really embarrassing when you go to a guy, when you go to your doctor and you're not ready to show her your cooch. So you didn't take a shower before you went. I, uh. I pulled my pants <laughs> out and I went, yeah, <laughs> And she, you know, and I says, I'm so sorry, I didn't expect. And she says, No, that there's, there's nothing. You, there, that's not a, uh, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's like when you get older and you get these little skin things. You know, like guys get on their, their balls. You know, their little mm -hmm. 
lumpy thing that whatever it is you know there, there's a name for it's it. In flags. Yeah, flag. Hello. Yeah. And um, so, <laughs> see, you know, you know, men, we don't have that problem because we want to show it to everybody. Oh no, I mine mine. This is this is the first person I've showed my pussy to in three years, three and a half years. Was my doctor. No one else has seen it. You know. I mean, you had to, you know. I don't even shave down there anymore because there's no use because. No one sees it. I mean, no, this is a little too too much, man. A little too am I here? Do I have to bring the lawnmower over? Oh my God! No, you got to bring the big clickers, clippers. No, but there's no reason to if you're not going to have sex. You know, if you're not going to have sex, why shave your armpits and why shave your legs? The only reason my armpits are shaved is because I went to Texas and I thought maybe somebody would see me in the shower by mistake, and I had to have clean armpits. Well, you know, whatever it takes, no? <laughs> when you don't share your body with anybody else, I mean, I really, I, I got to get close to the camera. I really have to get late. <laughs> I'm off my meds. I'm now horny. Help. <laughs> okay, you know, the next show, we should just have it like a dialing for dollars thing. <laughs> See, well, you're old enough, you can know, you know what that is. Yeah, I do. Dialing for dollars is trying to find you. Well, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends are dry Porsches. I must make amen. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. Oh, boy, I am smack. <laughs> we're doing karaoke. And we're I haven't done karaoke in a while. We did karaoke. That was yes, fun. We did. we did. You were shy. Yeah, you know, I really am. Yeah, can you believe that? Yeah, it, you know, and the funny thing is, you know, especially like, you know, if I do anything on stage, any performances and stuff like that, um, the bigger the stage, the better. You know, like I've played at the Whiskey, I've played at one club lingerie. These are some of the clubs aren't even there anymore. Uh, Madame Wong's. I had no problem. The lights are on. There's just a million people in the crowd. I can get lost in my music, no big deal. You put me in a in a small club with my you know acoustic guitar, and I I just I can't do it. <laughs> it, was, it was like you got up and sang, and this little teeny soft voice. I was like, sing it louder. We were cheering you on. Yeah, <laughs> I finally I finally came out a little bit, but you did. You did. It, it, it took me uh, a song or two. I forgot the first song, which was really funny because I know that song inside out and backwards. So, um, well, Carrie brought up something Kiki Karaoke. We had that on TSR Network. We were running the Kiki. Oh yeah, Karaoke. that was a lot of fun. Hey, um, you have other events that are coming up, don't you? I do, I do. I have a few events. We'll see. Well, we got, um, you know, I've been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot at uh, Sanctuary. I've been doing uh, my. Um, monthly gigs there with uh, Club Temp. Uh, I got some uh, cross dates, so I had to cancel in the last couple of months, but July 20th I'll be back there. For what? Um, for Purge and Club Temp yeah. um, with Miss um, uh, Domina uh, Tetra. Uh -huh. um, that's at Sanctuary. And then again on August uh, 16th, which is going to be her birthday, now we're talking. If you want to talk a, a party, this is going to be crazy. You know, and the one thing about the um, club tent parties is uh, they do uh, forced orgasms like for their first show. Mm -hmm. So here I am. And you talk about a good seat. <laughs> <laughs> I got the music going, and I'm just you know, and I'm just sitting there watching this, and um, I have to say, you know, it, it gets me hard. <laughs> I can imagine. That's like being hard at work, let me tell you. Well, they had the they had the the yeah the the masturbation stuff the last time I was there when they did the um the what's that TV show about the teacher who was a school teacher and he's he's oh Breaking Bad. Breaking, they did the Breaking yeah, Bad. Did, um, right. Yeah, I was there. I was there with a producer um, that was looking to produce a film on BDSM. So we're still. Oh, great. Yeah, you know, hope yeah. I, can, you know, become the consultant on it. It would be great, but. I'm going to be there for the one where they're doing the the Girl Scout. Girl Scout. Well, what is this Girl Scouts? Yeah, the girl or the camp. The camp. The hole. Yeah. The hole. Camp leader. I'm going to be the woman that runs the camp. 
Yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll probably stop by there because that's the same day as the um, Southern California Leather Gathering. So, but that's during the day. Yeah. So in the evening, we'll get actually get to go out there and play. So we can go to my house and get changed and take a shower and yeah, cool. Yeah, I've got to I've got to find an outfit. I I've, I've been out in the wilderness once in my life and that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find something khaki. Can you imagine me in khaki? Um, this, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to get shorts. But see, on you, they'd be like clam diggers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have some great events coming up. Pig Carrie says, I love you all. i got to go. Love you, Carrie. Bye. I love you, Carrie. Bye-bye. And, and there are so many people that are watching the show. Why don't you guys come in the chat room and ask them questions? We've only got a few more minutes. So what else are you doing? Um, well, I'm not sure yet. We have to work out uh, everything. But um, uh, Bordello, Decadence, we're going to be doing the camp, kinky camp out. Mm -hmm. Um and then um, after that, uh, most of the stuff is going to be, like I said, I'm going to be doing the, um, the stuff for Club Temp uh, monthly. Um, and then the other stuff is kind of private stuff, so I can't really share it for the world. <laughs> well, he is, we've also asked him if he'd be interested in being the DJ for my daughter's wedding. Oh, yes. i got to have somebody that's kinky there. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have fun doing that. We're going to have fun. Yeah, we um, so, but if anybody, you know, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, um, it's Sergio Master D underscore Master DJ at uh, yahoo.com, um, and uh, I don't have a website, but you can get me there as emails. Um, and same thing, Sergio Master DJ at um, on Facebook and on FetLife. So, um, if you guys want to get a hold of me. I do soundtracks, I do music scores, I do all kinds of good stuff. So, um, you do private parties, so you can go and DJ at private parties. And, and you're awesome. I can still, every once in a while, I'll do, um, I'll do like a guitar, I'll do like a background and do live guitar too, and um, play over it. So, Guitar for Babette's wedding. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. <laughs> Not anymore, but... <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't watch my show anyways. <laughs> no way does she watch my show. <laughs> she goes, Mom... She is, she is such a sweetheart. <laughs> she goes, Mom, those people. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been at a couple of your events, you know, oh so... I, I, she's been, yeah, she's been to my birthday party when she told me she was going to be out of, out of, out of the... City, and I, so I invited her because I didn't think she was going to be there. And she's a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> she's been a female dominant. She really should have been. She 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 has the balls. You know her. Yeah, she, that's true. Yeah, the apple does not far fall far from the tree. She has the balls, but she has kindness. Kindness is really important. So mm -hmm. any any regrets? Any regrets? Um. Wow. You know. Um, the only regret <laughs> that you gave well, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, not really. You know, I, I've kind of, I've just, um, I've been very lucky to have been honest with myself through, you know, through my life, pretty much, and been able to um, live, you know, just an awesome life. I've had just. Amazing things happen for myself, um, and I'm, I've met the girl of my dreams, you know, and, and the person I'm supposed to be with, and and um, you know, so I, I'm I'm really happy, you know. Um, things for me have turned out really well throughout my life, and um, so I don't think uh, I can't really think of anything. And you can still surf and. Ride your bike. Yeah. Um, we went for a bicycle ride uh, um, last weekend um, for the first time in a little while. Um, You've been losing weight. Yes, I. You know, I did. Uh, I gained a lot of weight. We we were um, we had to take a little time off of the community, you know, and rebuild ourselves. Um, 
my slave hurt her knee and she was um, kind of disco- and just had a hard time for a little bit and then you know got back and then she heard it again you know dancing and and um, so it was a little difficult for us um, but you know we kind of got everything back together um, actually I looked at myself one day in the mirror and just said oh my god <laughs> and um, since November uh, kind of went and we both both have been working out pretty much every day um, I've changed my eating habits a little bit um, and so I actually went out on my surfboard uh, this weekend uh, and it actually floats <laughs> so that was a good thing um, and uh, so there's one one more thing I want to try and do this this um, decade and uh, go back into skating the pools I want to do that one more time Wow um, any any this will be the last question um, any advice for someone that's new in the lifestyle um, yeah <laughs> you know stay away from Rev now <laughs> You know, get as much education as you can. I see, I'm kind of scared at some of the things I see out there. Um, you know, I know I went through it too. Um, you know, when I got into BDSM, it was, I was trained, but I wasn't trained traditionally. Um, I, you know, I had, a, um, I was uh, on the fire department for a little while. Uh, I was an EMT. Um, I knew a little bit about the body. Um, I studied a lot of different um, tantric um, religions and just you know a lot of stuff like that. So I learned a lot of things that way. Um, I did a lot of things. I learned how to you know do flogging and stuff like that through that and through I had a mentor um, early days um, and I didn't even know what BDSM was. Uh, so the best thing, but these these kids I see, they come out and they see all these really cool things that are people, you know, pro doms are out there and they're throwing fire, you know, they're lighting people on fire, they're they're smacking them around, and so they just go out and start doing it, and it really you really need to research what you're doing first because you know you can really hurt yourself, you can hurt your you know the people you're playing with. Um, not only physically but mentally and so as much education as you can get if you know get it because that is probably the most important thing in our lifestyle wonderful yeah you know from everything from relationships everything because you deal with a lot in BDSM yep. it's a lot more open um, you're dealing with a lot more feelings, um, more of the core of the feelings, um, and you know a lot of things pop up. So the more education you can have, the better you're prepared for what is going to happen. I'm sorry, my. <laughs> no, I I agree. Well, we're we're never on a time limit here because yeah, you know we you know you know we we run it the way we want to we, there's if we want to go over we can go over um, but it's really true what you're saying that you know this education is so important you've been a wonderful guest and you've been a wonderful friend and uh, you have all mm -hmm. of my respect and uh, you're a very honorable person that I care very very deeply for and I want to thank you so much for coming on the show but once again how can people get a hold of you um, like I said uh, you can get me on Facebook um, you can get me on that life or in yahoo.com, Sergio underscore Master DJ. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming on the show. Thank you and for having me on. You're welcome. <laughs> you guys, it is time to go. I know you've had a fun time. We got to ask about cocks again. We have not done that in a long time. Get your cock questions ready. We're getting back to the way that we used to be. Okie doke. I want to thank everybody for coming. So here we go. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Woo. <laughs>